This is David with The Verge, and this is the Lytro. It's a digital camera, but it's really unlike any digital camera we've seen before. And a lot of that is because of the technology inside the camera. Uh, it's called light field technology. And what it does is instead of just measuring the color and the intensity of the light coming at the camera, it measures the direction the light is moving to. And that allows the camera to do a lot more processing and a lot more editing after the fact. The great thing about the Lytro is that you can actually change the focus of a shot after you take it. It takes all of the light at once and then lets you edit the focus after you take the picture. The Lytro also looks different from any camera we've ever seen. Instead of looking like a rectangular camera, it kind of looks like a retracted telescope. Uh, it's about four inches long and it weighs about eight ounces and there's a lens on one end and a small display on the other. And that's basically all there is to the camera. Uh, part of it is a rubberized grip with a shutter button and raised dots that you swipe your finger along to zoom. And there's a power button on the bottom along with a micro USB port. But other than that, it's just the anodized aluminum body uh, available in red, gray, or blue, and really nothing else. As good looking as it is, I can't help but wish it looked and felt a little more like a regular camera. Partly because I would avoid the weird looks, but partly because it's a little awkward to hold and you never really get used to the way you're supposed to use the camera. Uh, it would be better if it were more in the style of a camera like the Olympus EPL3, which has small lenses and this seems like it would mount perfectly onto a camera like that and be really usable just with this extra cool photography feature on top of it. The other problem with the way that the Lytro is built now is that the display on the back is just not very good. It's a small one and a half inch LCD, uh, 128 pixels by 128 pixels, and its viewing angles are so bad that as soon as you get off axis, it becomes kind of almost negative colored and you can't really see what's going on and it's pixelated even in great lighting and it just makes pictures look bad and hard to see properly. On the bright side, the display's touch screen is actually really good. The interface is super simple. There's a small menu you can drag up from the bottom of the screen which will show how much battery or how much storage you have left on the camera and you can swipe from right to left to see your pictures and then double tap to zoom and you can pan around and again it's a small screen so the touch screen isn't as full featured as it could be but it does work really well. For one particular kind of shot, the Lytro takes really, really cool pictures. Uh, if you have a subject close to you, close to the lens, and one that's far away, being able to switch the focus back and forth after the fact is really cool, and it does a really good job of splitting the focus so that you can really drastically change when you move from the front to the back. For any pictures other than that, though, the Lytro really doesn't do that well, and especially in low light, when there's not a ton of data for the camera to be collecting, it just takes really awful pictures with a lot of noise and grain and the focusing effect pretty much becomes useless. A lot of the appeal of the Lytro is because there's so much you can do with the photos after you shoot them. Uh, there's a Lytro desktop software which is only available for Macs right now but is coming for Windows later this year and you can import photos in there and then do some neat things with them. Once you've imported your photos, the Lytro app is pretty simple. You can group your photos or organize them into events. Uh, you can also tweak the focus of your photos after the fact until you get them the way you want. And then you can export them as JPEGs, which you can use in other apps. But the JPEGs only come out as 1080 by 1080, which is barely over one megapixel and is quite small. Right now, the Lytro is kind of an odd thing to review. The technology behind it is really amazing. Light field photography definitely feels like it's the future of photography. And part of the advantage of this camera is that it's actually going to get better over time. We got to see uh, early builds of things like th a 3D viewer and perspective shift, which actually changes how the picture looks as you pan around it based on how you would move your head. Uh, and that technology is amazing, and it can all be applied via software update. But for right now, Lytro feels more like a feature than a full-fledged camera system. It would be an amazing thing to have in a phone or a DSLR. But for right now, if you're going to buy this, it's purely as an add-on to another camera. And this is definitely not something, especially at $399, that you're going to buy as your only camera. <laughs>